Hello and welcome to the meeting for Monday, September 25th for After Effects. Hello. Hey. Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing all right. Doing Still okay. hanging in there, breathing. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, happy Monday to you. Anybody have a good weekend? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a general consensus that no, we did not have a good weekend. Uh, so, well, maybe maybe if you didn't have a good weekend, maybe you'll have a good week. What do you think of that? Worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I commit that. <laughs> maybe maybe if it can't get any worse than this weekend, you're you're already doing better, right? Uh, this is true. This is true. Okay, uh, let me uh, let me go ahead and put you guys in the role, and then uh, we'll go from there and get started in the class. Subpoena.edu. Okay. And. Teach, teach. Tennis tracking. And After Effects. Okay. Let's see. Around here. Change that. Okay. And boom. We're done with that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Go back here. Zoom. Zoom, a zoom, a zoom, a zoom. Does anybody remember that show, Zoom? I I know I'm like older than all of you put together, but uh, has anybody ever heard of this this show Zoom that was on probably like in the 70s? I remember hearing of it. I never actually watched it though. That's probably why you're a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pretty funny. I'll see if I can get some footage of it. Um, it's just a bunch of kids running around singing about Zooming. So, I don't know. I, I think as a kid, I pretty much watched anything that was on TV. So, they could have polluted my mind with, with any kind of uh, political or other thought control. Uh, they probably did, um, which is why I'm here today. Um, anyway, oh, let me go ahead and open this chat here. Never heard of it. Like the movie They Live. <laughs> exactly. Well, let me see... I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm, I'm going to YouTube now. I'm going to put Zoom TV show in. Uh, yeah, this is it. Oh my God. And there's an intro and everything. Okay. I got to show you guys this because cause you'll have a much better understanding of why I am the way I am today. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got to share my screen. Okay, and there was an opening song that uh, I'm going to subject you to. Let's see. Here we go. I think. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Go. <laughs> Let's do it.
<laughs> Love See, it. I think I could have had a chance to grow up as a normal human being if I didn't watch that show. <laughs> but because I watched it, I am where I am today. So anyway, consider yourself lucky you didn't grow up in the 70s. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go to the class website here. Pima, where are you, Pima? I have to sneeze here. Excuse me a second. Oh. At, least you didn't, at least you didn't grow up with Teletubbies. <laughs> oh, with Teletubbies. I know. They're scary, huh? I don't know what the deal is with those. Do they, do they scare you? <coughs> Sorry. I have, I have no idea oh, why sure. I like that show. <laughs> Looking back. I think I think that's one of those shows that was created by the um, the television producers. Like, you know, they they would they would make certain costumes and have um, people get in them and act a certain way, and then they would test it out on kids. And I think Teletubbies was like just just hypnotize kids. Like they would just sit down and never move and just watch the Teletubbies, which is why I think they are the way they are today. Um, just weird and creepy. I remember you, ever, you guys ever hear of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the animated special yeah yeah so i remember watching that and like feeling i was like a little kid and i felt like i had taken acid <laughs> just watching <laughs> yeah. i mean it was so like ah it was so weird i was like i was like don't they have don't they have some kind of controls that stop them from showing certain things to kids but no uh okay let's see let's go to after effects here um yeah teletopies are pretty cute i gotta admit um Okay, so so last week we uh, we came up with some ideas uh, for the next project, uh, the travel project to a fascinating and fantastic place, and we heard uh, a bunch of people's ideas. Now, did some of you guys come up with ideas that we haven't heard yet that you want to share with us? Okay, so we pretty much heard everybody's ideas, or... You're still not ready. You're still not willing to talk unless we apply electricity to your body. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, all right, so let's do this. We've got a couple of tutorials to do today. So let's go uh, go to the class website. Uh, it says Adobe Tutorials, Download Files, and Do Tutorials 1 and 2. The videos are here. So what you have to do is click on this little here, here. And uh, what you want to do is click this Get Files. And uh, it's a pretty big file because it's got like five tutorials in it. Um, and we're going to do a couple of them today and then we'll do uh, some more tomorrow. But yeah, you can see this thing. Uh, it's called create video visual effects.zip. That's the file that's opening up. I'm going to open up my After Effects here as well. Um, okay, and then once that's downloaded, you can unzip it. There we go. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, I'll hit okay on this. A little warning, if you get that, you can hit okay. Oh, shoot. I lost my file. Okay, I can just click on find it and it will show me where it is. Okay, find that. There it is. Okay, so you're going to get a um, zip file, which hopefully you'll will un unzip. Uh, and then, let's see. Um, I think it shows, let me see, when did I download this? 10, 12. Yeah, that's not the right one. Hold on one second. Let me just uh, create video visual effects. Yeah, it is the right one. Okay. It just looked kind of weird. Um, okay. So we are going to, let's see, it's just today. Okay. Uh, inside there, there is a 2018 version, 2017. Open up the 2018 um, and let it expand. Did any of you guys have shows that you watched when you were kids that you thought were very strange or interesting or had a, a big impact on you? SpongeBob. 
SpongeBob. Yeah. Bananas in pajamas. What's it called? Bananas in pajamas. Oh, really? What was that all about? It was like uh, um, a reenactment of what is um, what is that other puppet? So, um, what Big Bird? Oh, it's like a Big Bird. Yeah, but it it was Bert and Ernie. You know how they would talk about stuff and do like that. But it was two bananas in pajamas, and they would talk about stuff. <laughs> but they're always in pajamas in a their house. That sounds really fun. Actually, was it good? Uh, uh, I can't recall any lessons from it, but that's what stuck with me. It's, <laughs> always dancing bananas it's weird kids kids have a really they're really tuned into like abstract stuff like stuff you can abstract stuff you can show to kids and they'll be like fascinated by it and adults will be like what the hell is that you know it's just fascinating um let's see somebody watched speed racer i remember speed racer at go speed racer uh and then Beyblade metal fusion well that's a new one to me uh let's see Gabriel Michael says, also the TV shows nobody believed existed for real until the internet. The shows were called Manimal, Auto Man, and Street Hawk. Courage the Cowardly Dog. I mean, I love it, but it was weird. Yeah. I don't know. I still love that show. Even though it's weird. Oh, Invader Zim. Besides Invader Zim, Invader Zim is very, very important. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is Hero 108 and Shaolin Showdown. Wow. God. You know, and I only watched the things that were uh, that were on when I was growing up as I was a kid. And there's like a bunch of years between then and now that they had tons of stuff for kids that I could probably check out. But I don't know. Um, like, I, I don't think say, I, like, I remember when I was like four, uh, PBS was the only place that showed cartoons. And yeah. like at 12, the cartoons would switch to super boring stuff because that was nap time. And then the cartoons would also stop at 5 p.m. And then I'd be bored the rest of the night. <laughs> Yeah, and they didn't have, uh, I don't think they had VCRs when I was a kid growing up. So it was pretty much like, uh, you know, you either catch it or you, or that's it. You know what I mean? I think, I think VCRs came along eventually when I was uh, growing up, but we didn't have them at first. Um, okay, so what's this first one called? Uh, please type in the video footage. Okay, so then what you'll want to do is double click on this, please type in the video footage. And then it's going to tell you it has to convert the project. Um, and then, okay, so what we'll have now is this footage right here. Looks like you can hit your space bar. And it looks like it's just a plane uh, starting to take off from the runway. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see what else they want us to do with this crazy plane. Okay. Okay. Um, The 3D camera tracker effect can analyze a piece of video and determine the exact placement and movement of the original camera used to shoot the footage. We're going to use that effect to place some text into a scene, making it appear as though it's been sitting in the environment of the scene itself. The footage in this project is of an airport runway, and I want to add the number 05 to the runway right in this area here. So to start that process, Let's select the runway layer in the timeline, then go up to the animation menu and choose track camera. Immediately After Effects will start analyzing the footage in the background. This okay, so we're going to start with that. Um, I'm probably going to have to leave this video small so I can go back and forth between it and After Effects. So we click on the runway.movie um, and we we hit the animation uh, drop down and we click track camera. And uh, it starts analyzing the scene. This allows you to work in any other composition in After Effects while the analysis is still happening. If you want to get an update to the status, go ahead and look in the top of the effect controls panel under the 3D camera tracker and you'll get a real time update unless it's finished. Once it's finished, the effect will be highlighted here in the effect controls panel, and you'll see these crosses in the runway here. Now, if you hover your mouse over these crosses, you'll notice there is a target that appears, and the target determines where you're going to place something in the scene. 
Okay, so let me stop there. So everybody's computer is going to take a different amount of time to solve um, the analysis of this picture, right? Once it's done, if you take your mouse and you hover over these colored uh, points here, you get a target and you'll notice that the target will angle at different angles as you go over different points, right? And what it is is the um, the, 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 the computer analyzes the scene and looks for all the planes. Uh, and I don't mean like airplanes, right? It looks for all the flat surfaces. So it analyzes this runway and it figures out where the flat surfaces are on that. It analyzes this little strip uh, here, you know, it analyzes whatever else it thinks is a flat surface that you might want to put something on like a 3D object. And then it puts in these little coordinate points. And then what you could do is you can hover your mouse over one of them and say, you know, if you click on it, you're basically saying, I want to put something here in this plane. And then it will allow you to put in whatever you want to put. Now I'm looking at this and the target is very distorted. So let's look at some of the settings. If we go to the top of the effect controls panel under shot type, Fixed angle of view has been chosen. That means the lens wasn't zooming in and out during the shot, which is correct. But when you notice some drastic distortion like we saw with the target, you may want to go in and specify the angle of view. So I went online and searched angle of view with my model of camera to shot this footage. And it just so happens the angle of view or the field of view for my specific camera was 73 degrees. So I'll specify my angle of view and set it at 73 degrees and press enter. Okay. So we're going to go up here and click on the 3D camera tool, right? Notice it says fixed angle of view. We're going to click on that and change it to specify angle of view. We're going to click on this number right here and change it to 73 and hit enter. Okay. And then uh, the analysis happens again. Notice it doesn't have to reanalyze anything, it just recomputes the analysis. Now when I hover with my target, it's still got a little distortion, you know, close up here, but it's nowhere near what it was before. And when I'm out here, there's far less distortion. So I'm going to hover around this general area and I want my target to look like it's actually sitting on the tarmac. If you notice as I'm moving my mouse around the scene I'm getting three points that create a triangle and so if I click those three points will be selected. If you Okay so if you take your mouse and you hover it over here you should see less distortion and what you want to do is you want to you want to find an area right over here in this area where it looks like your target is sitting flat on the tarmac, right? And you can even see those three points that he was talking about. You'll see like a white triangle forming between them. Now mine doesn't look, you know, there's a couple places I could put mine. There's actually a number of places over here that look kind of like what he has. So just try and find something that's a, a relatively flat area like this and then click once to uh, select those points. Okay, now when you do that, it's going to select the three points of the triangle. You hold down shift and click on other points. You can use those to further refine exactly where the elements are placed in the scene. Now it's not that important that you have the exact same points that I do. I just want you to make sure that the target looks like it's actually sitting on the tarmac. Hover your mouse over the middle of the target and you should notice the mouse change into the move tool here. Once you see the move tool, go ahead and drag the target anywhere you like in the scene where you'd like to place your graphics. Once you have it in a location you like, right click or control click if you're on the Mac right over the center of that target and then choose set ground plane in origin. Okay, so I'm going back to After Effects here. And so you hover over the center of this and your mouse becomes a move tool. Click, and then you can drag this target around the screen and 
now what it's doing it's it's conforming to the plane uh you know this tarmac plane right so drag it over to where you think you might like to have your object appear it, it doesn't matter everybody might pick something a little different and once you have it where you want it right click in the center of the circle of the target and choose set ground plane and origin So whenever you insert something with the 3D tracking data, it will automatically be inserted at the origin. So it's really important to go ahead and set that. Once it's set, move your mouse back over the center of the target and then right click or control click again. And this time I want you to choose create text and camera. Okay, so the whole reason we went to all that trouble in the first place is to you know, we analyze, we had After Effects analyze the scene and find out all the planes, you know, and then we, we adjusted the camera lens so that it looked a little less distorted. We went around, we, we found a plane we could click on, and then we moved our target. And it was all so that we could put something into the scene. And you guys see this in movies all the time, especially in credits uh, at the beginning of a movie or end of the movie where they have like, you know, text on a, you know, on the side of a building or maybe on a freeway. Um, it's usually placed there in a program like After Effects. Um, so now we're, we can place some text and make it look like it's sitting on this tarmac here. So right click in the center and do create text and camera. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll drop some text in there. Everybody's is going to be a different color and a different font. Uh, but it'll drop text in that is sitting on that plane. To edit the text, Go to the timeline and double click on the T icon for the text layer. Then type 05 and grab the selection tool to set the type. Okay. So come down here, double click on the text tool. It's going to select all your text. Then you can highlight the text and type in 05. And then uh, let's click the selection tool. Now let's go to the character panel on the right and change our typeface. Click once on the font drop-down menu, and rather than previewing fonts, let's type Arial, A-R-I-A-L. Press Enter to set the new font. Let's press R to open up the rotation and orientation settings. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and set Arial as the font. So uh, come over here, click on whatever font you have there, type in Arial. And uh, that should set that as the font. Click and drag on the Z rotation parameter until you get to a setting of 91 degrees. In okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to hit R for rotation while we have that um, selected. So make sure that layer is selected. If you hit your R key on your keyboard as a quick key command, it will open up the ro rotation attribute. Now I want you to notice that you know when you when you're normally working with After Effects and you work with something like rotation, you just have the um, the X and the Y parameters. But when you're working with something like camera tracking like this, you also have the Z parameters. So we've got X, Y, and Z, which come straight a, out at you. Notice that there's all three of those can be set individually, and then all three of them can be adjusted right up here. Uh, under orientation X Y and Z so what he would like you to do is click on that third one and type in uh, 91 and what that should do is rotate clockwise your text 91 degrees now keep in mind that when you look at rotation there's always two numbers the first number is how many times you want something to rotate 360 degrees so like if you had a ball uh, at the beginning of your animation, you wanted it to rotate a complete 360 by the end of your animation, you would put the number one in there and would rotate one complete time over that period, that span of animation. But the second number, the 0.0, .0 with the degree symbol, is if you wanted to rotate anything different from 360. So instead it could be 270 or 91 degrees like we just did. You can even do a combination of the two, like you could put one in here and then 60 degrees here, and it would do 360 plus 60 or uh, 220, right? 
Okay, so we just rotated that. Let's see what we have to do next. In order to reposition this, I'm not going to change the position. I'm going to change the anchor point. So press A to open the anchor point. And usually I would scrub on these parameters as I reposition, but I already know exactly where I want things to go. So let's change X to negative 25 and press tab to move to Y and we'll set negative 27 for that and press enter to set. Now okay. So negative 25 and negative 27. Okay. So now what we can do, we're still on this. You can hit the letter A and another quickie command, A will bring up your anchor point. Now your anchor point is usually the point in the center of an object. And you can reset that anchor point, which of course resets the object. So we've got three numbers here. So click on the first number, put in negative 25, hit your tab key. For the second number, put in negative 27. Okay, so the anchor point, which in reality is this little point right here, which I guess it's not really in the dead center of this text because it's a text object. You know, maybe they, they locate the, the anchor point a little differently. But you can see uh, what it did was it moved the anchor point to these specific coordinates. Once again, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and notice also that um, that this is a 3D object you're dealing with, even though it's a, a 2D plane. You know, the video itself is a 2D plane. We shot the video, or the video was shot in 2D. But what's cool about this camera tracking is when it analyzes the footage, it analyzes all the planes as if they were 3D, and it creates a 3D space. And that's why you can do things like, you know, lay your text out flat. But it's also why you have this uh, blue, green, and red arrow. You can literally click on these and grab them and pull up um, in the Y plane, pull over in the, uh, the X plane, or pull on the red one in the Z plane to reposition. We don't want to do that right now, but you can, you can certainly do that if you want to. But the text is very large, so I'll press S to open up the scale. And your scale number may be slightly different than mine, so just try and visually match it. I'm going to set my scale to 580 and press enter. Okay, and so, you know, one of the good things about this tutorial is we're, we're sort of learning or relearning some of the quickie commands, right? There's only like a half a dozen or so different attributes that come standard on um, After Effects, like, you know, transparent and scale and rotate and anchor point. And when you learn these quickie commands, you can very quickly open and close them. So, so now we're gonna hit S um, to bring up scale. And uh, he, he said his to 580. Um, I want to look at his screen. He seems to be, uh, just, just look at sort of how big that text is compared to the yellow line and the plane. And you can put in whatever number on your screen kind of makes it look like that. Um, I have a feeling I might want to zoom out a little bit on my screen. Uh, no, well, let's see. Uh, oh, you know what the problem is? The problem is my footage is down here, like a certain way down the screen. And what it really should be is at the beginning. Uh, so when, once I do that, now I can see how much bigger my text is um, than his, right? So uh, I'll go in and I'll, I'll try and set a number in here that shrinks it down. Now he, he set his to 580, which is a huge number. You can, you can click on this first number and put in any number you want. And because this uh, chain link is here, it, it's linking all three numbers together. Now, another thing that I like to do is called scrubbing. Just put your mouse right on top of a blue number and move it to the left uh, while holding down on the mouse, and it will shrink. It will shrink the number for you. If you move it to the right, it will uh, increase whatever element you're scrubbing on. Um, okay, so I think that is not. Uh, not as bad as it used to be. So let's let's watch uh, the rest of this video. And then to blend the colors in a little better, let's go over the character panel and grab the eyedropper and then sample a gray from the side of the runway. So after you've picked your... Okay, so now um, you have your eyedropper here and uh, you know your, your color chip here is the, what's called the fill color of your object and then the back uh, chip here is the stroke color a color that you might want to wind around the object 
Uh, but this eyedropper tool will allow you to sample a color. So we'll click on that. We'll go back here. We'll sample this gray here. Now, um, his, his fit a lot better on the runway than mine, mine does. So I'm going to experiment. I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to experiment with a little bit. I want to see if I can click on this red arrow, which, which is the uh, Z. And I'm just going to pull it towards me and, you know, bring that, 05 back onto the runway like it should be. I'm also going to uh, scale it down even more because, you know, the purpose here is to make this look like it's actually painted on the cement. And I think uh, if I do that, it looks pretty good. In fact, if I pull it even a little closer towards me, this angle of the five right here lines up really nicely with this line for me. Um, and so that's going to make it look even more realistic. The goal of stuff like this is to make make it look like it's real unless of course it's a special effect like you have text floating in the middle of the street uh, you know you, that's clearly an effect that you want all right let's see what we have next your color press V to grab the selection tool and let's press R to open the rotation orientation one more time because I'm looking at this and the angles here are a little tight so let's change the Z rotation on the orientation to a setting of 95 and then I'll click in the bottom of the timeline to deselect everything and press the space bar to play everything back. Okay, so he made one more adjustment. Um, so he went in here and he, we were on scale, right? Uh, but you can click on your thing here and hit R for rotation again. And then he changed this to 95 and hit enter. Uh, now, I don't actually like that as much as I liked mine. So I'm going to do... Command Z, because uh, I like where mine is. But you can try 95 and see if it works for you. Um, and then uh, you can uh, make sure your playback head is at the beginning of the scene here, and then just hit the space bar. And what's so cool about it is because because uh, After Effects analyze the footage as the camera moves that number on the ground stays in the correct perspective as the camera moves. So it's pretty cool. It looks like it was actually there in the scene and you'd be hard pressed to say that it wasn't if you didn't know about all this stuff happening in the background. Um, so how'd that work out for you guys? Did you get that to work? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, now um, these, these tutorials that we do, if you'd like to, you can save them in a folder uh, on your computer. You can just call it, you know, AE tutorials or something like that. And then um, if you ever need a refresher, you're like, oh, I want to, you know, put some 3D text in a scene or something like that. You can go rewatch this. You can even go back out to the tutorial, you know, from my website. And this would be a good uh, reference for you. Okay, so you can save that if you like uh, in a tutorials folder. And now we're oh, what was the video called again? Uh, so the video is called um, Place Type into Video Footage. Um, that's the first one here. And the video inside the folder is called the same thing. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this tra camera tracking again. But this time we're going to do it, we're going to put it on a moving object, which is pretty cool. So here's a little like uh, Volkswagen station wagon. These are cool old cars. And basically, let's set the scene like this. Let's say that you were, um, have you guys ever like bought a car on Craigslist? Anybody ever done that? Okay. Um, if you had bought a car on Craigslist, sometimes they'll put pictures up uh, and uh, sometimes they'll even put videos up of the car, right? Uh, so Gabriel Michael said that uh, he, he bought some through newspapers, but not on Craigslist. Um, okay, so if you did put a video up of your car on Craigslist, you would more, most likely blur out the license plate so that nobody takes your license number and, you know, makes a fight, fake license plate or enters it, you know, at the DMV or something for whatever nefarious purposes, right? So that's what's going to happen here. You know, uh, somebody shot some footage of a Volkswagen station wagon, an old Volkswagen station wagon driving down th through sort of a mountainous, a windy road. And what we're going to do is we're going to take just the license plate. We're going to select an area around that. 
we're going to have the camera track it, and then we're going to put a special effect on. We're going to blur it out so that you're going to still see the footage of the car driving, but everywhere that it drives, it's going to uh, select that license and blur it out. Okay, so what you want to do is go into your same folder, and uh, let's see. Uh, this one, I believe, is Blur Out Unwanted Elements. So open Blur Unwanted Elements. You can double click on that. Like I said, if you want to save this one, you can, or you can say don't save. And After Effects will always have to um, convert these files to the latest version because they're a couple years old. So here's our footage. You can hit your space bar and uh, see the station wagon driving on sort of this I'm calling it a mountain road, but it may not be. It may just be hills, but you see the pine trees and everything. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and open the tutorial and see what he has to say. The track mask feature in After Effects can make quick work of blurring out unwanted elements from your footage. In this tutorial, we're going to blur out a license plate. To get started, let's select layer one in the timeline and press the space bar to play back. You may notice there's a fair amount of movement in this shot, so we might have to make some minor adjustments as the track is occurring. I'll press the spacebar to stop playback and move my current time indicator back to the beginning of the timeline. We want to start by applying a mask, so go up to the tool panel and grab the pen tool. With the pen tool active, let's go to the lower left corner of the composition panel and change the magnification to 200% and then press and let me stop right there. Now, I know that this video is very quiet. I actually have my volume maxed out. Uh, and he's speaking very quietly in this. So, you know, I'm going to repeat everything he says. But uh, so we go back to After Effects. And uh, what we want to do is, you know, if you've played your video a little bit, um, you want to grab it and bring it back to the starting point. You can also do that by hitting on what's called these transport controls here. Uh, this one right here will take you back to the beginning. or your home button uh, on your keyboard will take you back to the beginning. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to click on this um, pen tool, which is the one up here in your toolbox. It looks like a little nub on a, like a calligraphic uh, pen. Hold the space bar down to switch to the hand tool temporarily. As long as you hold the space bar down, when you click and drag, you're just repositioning things using the hand tool. Okay, so now, you know, click on the wagon layer down here. Uh, change your view to a 200%. Now you can do that by clicking on this drop down menu here in the lower left corner and go to 200%. That's going to zoom you in on this. Now, if you hold your space bar down at any point while you're hovering over the composition here, your mouse becomes a hand tool and you can click on your object and you can drag it around the screen. That's what the hand tool will do. And we'll only do it when you're zoomed in. When you're zoomed all the way out, there's nowhere to, to drag because you can see everything. So drag it in so you can see your, uh, your license plate right in the center there. Then just let go of the mouse and let go of the space bar and there's your pen tool back. Now let's start adding points around the outside edge of the license plate. Let's start in the upper left corner and click around through each of the corners, staying kind of close. And then when you get back to the first point, make sure to click on that to close the path. Okay. Um, so we've got our pen tool here, which draws uh, vector paths, just like in Illustrator or Photoshop. Come start at the top left corner of the license plate and click once. Uh, come over here to the top right corner and click once down lower right corner, uh, over to the lower left, and then hover over the first point and then click while you're hovering. And that will, that will create a, a selection of the pen tool. Now, don't freak out if everything else turns black around it. That's sort of the normal uh, mode that it's set in. It Basically, when you use your pen tool like this, it sort of uh, creates a form of mask where it masks everything else out and all you can see is whatever the window is of the shape that you created. If you need to reposition a point, when you hover back over that point, you can click and reposition. So I'll just reposition the edges of the mask 
off the edges of the license plate. There we go. Okay, this looks pretty good. Okay, so if you want to move things around, uh, and you could zoom in even more here, like I might go into 400% here. Um, you can click on these points again and you can drag them out. And if you want to like completely go around the edges of the license plate so you get those rounded corners, you can try that as well. Like so. Now, by the way, um, this is not the last time you guys will do camera tracking. There's a couple exercises in the book that, that do it as well. And it's good to do this multiple times because this is a really um, powerful aspect of After Effects that you probably want to use in your own productions at some point. Now we're ready to start tracking. Since we're on frame zero, we only need to track down to the right. To track, select the layer and press M to reveal your mask. Right click on mask one and choose track mask. Okay, so uh, like I said, it created a mask around the shape, right? Now another one of your quick key commands is M for mask, and you do that and it will pop up the mask, and that's the selection of the mask itself. Now you can either right click or control click on that if you're on a Macintosh, and then click track mask. Now what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen right away. A little, uh, a little uh, window is going to pop up in the lower right hand corner, and this is your mask tracker. And it's got some uh, choices here for you to make. I think the default is what we're going to choose, but um, we'll let him tell us what he thinks. That will open the tracker. Here we want to look at the method. I'll click on the drop down, and we can just choose position, scale, and rotation. To track to the right, let's choose the innermost play button that points to the right. So go ahead and click play. Well, hold on. Actually, don't don't click play yet because there's something I need to tell you. Um, okay, so let me go back to After Effects here. Uh, so, you know, there's all these different choices you have. We're going to choose position, scale, and rotation. That's basically everything. We want it to track everything that's going on with this moving object, which is the car. Um, but I do need to tell you something, which is when you hit this play button, which is the, the triangle facing to the right, What's going to happen is the playhead is going to start moving through the scene. But as you watch it carefully, at certain points, the mask, which is the pen points around the um, license, will start to float off of the license. Now, when that happens, you have to hit your space bar as soon as you see that happening. And then it'll stop at that frame. And then you can go in and adjust the mask points. And when you've got them how you want them, you can hit the space bar again to have it continue on its journey. Now you may have to do this a couple times while it plays just to keep it so that that mask is always right around the license plate, right? Um, let's go ahead and let's watch him first before we do it and you'll see he, he stops his as well. And let's watch the track. So he just hit his uh, you want to keep a close eye on the track as it's occurring because if any of these points start to drift too far away from their current position, you'll want to stop playback by clicking on the play button one more time. Thankfully, this track seems to be doing well so far, so I haven't had to stop. Okay, now I'll stop here because I want to adjust the points. Make sure and press V to grab your selection tool. Okay, so he actually suggests uh, clicking on the play button again to stop uh, the playback, right? Now then you can hit the letter V as in victory. That will select your, um, your, your uh, selection tool. And then you can grab the individual points and you can move them where you need to move them. Now, notice where he stopped. Uh, every one of these little, it's probably hard for you to see these, but these are each one of these little uh, gray dots is a frame. So he was almost like two-thirds of the way through before he uh, stopped playback by clicking on the play button again and then made an adjustment to his uh, frames. Um, let's go ahead and watch the rest of this. And click outside of the mask to deselect all the points. Then you can go around each individual point and adjust accordingly. Now you should be a little careful every time you stop to make adjustments to the mask because the mask tracker is adding a keyframe for every single frame. So here I'm going to move my current time indicator 
between the last two keyframes, and I'll use J and K on my keyboard to toggle back and forth between the last two. And you can see there's a pretty big shift here, but it's not going to be that bad because it's going to be a blur, and that means it won't be that noticeable. Now let's go back to the tracker and keep tracking to the right. And you'll want to repeat the same process we just did at various times throughout the rest of the timeline. And through the magic of editing, I'll go ahead and join you once this track is complete. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start mine so you guys can see what's happening. You'll see it pretty clearly when it starts to go off, right? Um, and you can stay zoomed in like this or you can zoom out a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the play button. I'm going to let it start tracking. And as soon as I see these points get pretty far off, um, I'm going to hit the play button again to stop it. Here we go. Now, depending on your computer, it'll either go faster or slower. You can see on my computer all the little gray points that are being made uh, for every single frame. And it's doing a pretty good job. His didn't really uh, screw up until like two-thirds of the way through, but everybody's is different. Everybody has a different uh, mass creation. Mine's looking pretty good. Um, I've done this before, and there are certain points where it just gets a little off. And it really makes sense to stop the playback. Um, so far, so good. Maybe it's because I made kind of a big mask and it's all the way around the damn thing. Now, it is getting pretty huge at this point. I'll stop it just for grins, um, just to show you if you want to make an edit, right? So because the car is further away, the mask, it didn't get any, any smaller, right? Um, what you can do is, you know, hit your V uh, key to select the uh, selection tool. You can click in the black area to deselect everything and then click on any individual point to uh, reselect it. And then what I may do is I may just try and pull these in a little bit so that it's only blurring the license and not a big chunk of the car, but I don't want to pull them in too close because I want some of that play. Um, okay, now once I'm done, uh, he said you can use the J and the K on your keyboard. J goes backwards one frame and K moves forward one frame. You can always use these in Adobe After Effects. And you can see that's a pretty huge difference in size there, um, but I'm okay with it because as he said, it's all just blurriness. So let's go ahead and hit the play button again to track some more. And I'm going to hover my mouse over this play button. Okay, now there was a there was a little jump there. Um, now you can grab your playback head and you can drag it back, or you can hit the J. Uh, yeah, so you can see that this mask is really jumping around in those last couple frames. But regardless, it still seems pretty good. So I'm just going to keep going, see how far I can make it. Maybe I'll make it all the way to the end. Oh. Uh, it's getting a little scary right there, so I'm going to hit my V key and, uh, you know, move this over a little bit, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to hit play again. Now, as this is going, I want to uh, inform you guys that, you know, there's people in Hollywood and other places that this is the kind of stuff they do all day. They use programs like After Effects to track objects uh, moving through movies and through TV commercials. And maybe they want to make special changes to an object. Like you can do almost anything imaginable. Uh, you can change the color of something. You can add something to somebody. Like, you know, you can put a fake arm on somebody or remove a tattoo or something. And you got to make sure that that patch you put on them stays in place. Um, and so all of those big budget movies, the Iron Mans and the Marvel movies, um, you know, where they've got all these, where they shoot everything on green screen and then put special effects and costumes in afterwards, um, there's, you know, potentially hundreds of people uh, tuned in doing little bits like this for each scene. Or maybe there's multiple people working on one scene. Uh, each one is doing somebody else's costume or something. So... You know, this is where a lot of that money goes, is, is all the special effects. 
Okay, so it's it's tracked the entire scene at this point. Let's see what happens next. All right, so I'll move my current time indicator back to frame one, and then go up to the effect menu, down to blur and sharpen, and let's choose fast box blur. Okay, so we're gonna grab the playback head. Oh wow. Um, I can see that thing moving around, but it, it's, you know, it's, it, it looks like it's moving off of the thing, but I think it's just an illusion because it hasn't all rendered the scene yet. But move back to the beginning, uh, go to, uh, click on your layer, uh, go to effects, go to blur and sharpen, and uh, go to fast box blur. Let's go up to the blur radius and scrub to a value of 9. And then go back down to the timeline and I'll collapse mask 1. Okay, so we're going to go to what's called blur radius. This is where our special effects occur. Click on that. You can drag it over until you hit 9 or sometimes it's easier just to type in the number. Um, and you can see the blurriness happen there. And then come down here and click on the triangle next to the mask 1 to close that up. Open it up and then just feather the mask. Now, this is a weird aspect of After Effects. It might trip you guys out. But, you know, when we open this mask, when we hit the letter M and originally opened it, it just showed one attribute for the mask. But sometimes in After Effects, when you close something and open it again, it shows even more things. And that's what's going to happen here. After we close the mask, when we open it again, now we get a bunch of different attributes that we can um, edit for the mask. Now, what we're going to edit is this thing called a mask feather, which, you know, feathering is how much something is softened on the edges and how much it spreads. So let's see what he wants us to put in for that value. So click and drag. We'll feather the mask about 12 pixels. Okay, so uh, he wants a feathering of 12 pixels. So whenever you see this little chain link here and you see two sets of numbers, it means they're linked together, so it doesn't matter which one you roll over. Uh, click on either one and drag it to the left until you hit 12. Uh, and if you if it's hard to select exactly 12, just click on it and put in the number 12. And let's change that mask back to add. And open the effects options here in the timeline. Open up fast. Okay, so uh, let me go back to After Effects. So... Um, right now our mask is something called add and invert it and um, his you know uh, it, it defaulted back to something like none at a certain point um, but ours my didn't my didn't default back so we can just leave it in the add there uh, which is just showing the mask itself and and nothing else box blur and at the bottom click the plus button next to compositing options. This way the mask is only masking the effect and not the layer. Okay so basically he wants us to make it so now we can see so like he said the mask is only masking the um, area and not the whole thing. So what you have to do is now you have a layer down here called effects which is the fast box blur. So you can open that up open fast box blur Come down here to where it says compositing options and click on the plus symbol. And when you do that, what it does is it flips or inverts the mask. So before, the mask was a window which blocked everything else out, which is how a mask normally works. But by inverting it, you show everything else except what's in the mask. And then the effect is being applied to that. So in this case, it's blurring out what's inside the mask, which is the license plate. Feel free to click anywhere to deselect, and then press the comma key on your keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Then press... Okay, so... Oops, got a bunch of robots there. Um, okay, so what you can do now is you can click in the gray area down at the bottom to deselect everything. And then on your keyboard, hit the comma key, and that will zoom everything out. Make sure you're back at the beginning, and then um, just hit your space bar for playback. 
Now, in my case, and I don't know why it's doing this, but mine only goes a little bit into the animation and then keeps playing that over and over again. So it's it's having trouble rendering the whole scene. So if I go past that and hit play, uh, it'll continue to render the whole scene uh, one little bit at a time. I don't know what's up with my computer, why it's being so wonky, but... I think it's your RAM, probably. Yeah, it's probably pretty pretty low on the RAM. Or, you know, the other thing is I usually have a bunch of programs open, and so they're sucking up RAM. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so funny. It goes to here, and then it jumps over here. So, um, yeah, my, my computer's kind of janked, but um, you can see what's happening. It's got that blanked out the whole time, and it looks pretty good. Okay. Um, all right. Let's finish this little video talk. Press the space bar to watch your video. It's always wise to watch your video at 100% before you decide whether or not you like the results of your work. Okay. And that's it. Now, um, so once again, with this video, um, you're welcome to save this if you want to use it as a reference, or you can just close it and then not save it, and then it will just go away. But um, Whatever you do, don't don't dispose of the original files because um, we've got uh, three other tutorials that we're going to do on Wednesday that are uh, the other tutorials that are on this page, and you've already downloaded the files for them. So we'll do those on Wednesday. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go in here. I'm not going to keep mine because I've already done it, uh, and so I'll just uh, go file, close, and then that closes that up. Okay. So let's go back to the class website, which we can probably just hit the back button here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, so what I wanted to do next was I wanted to talk to you guys about the concept of an animatic. Does anybody know what an animatic is? <laughs> Seems like a no. <laughs> nope. Yeah, nope. I couldn't unmute. <laughs> I uh it, it's not like a full animation but like it's I don't want to say keyframes but I'm going to say the keyframes of it the main points. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually correct. Um uh let me let somebody in here uh, into the class here. Um I'm an animation major. I should know this. I've made one before. Right, right, right. So an animatic is where you take um like you take like a storyboard, which is a bunch of sketches of your um, your animation or your project, your film project, and you animate them, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an animatic for an animation. And then uh, we'll put together a little, uh, just a very short animatic for some fake project. And then I'm going to ask you guys to work on an animatic for project two, the, the project about the fantastic journey that you guys are working on. And this animatic will help you in your process of creating the final project. So, um, okay, so let's start here. So I'm gonna show you an animatic for an animation that I worked on with uh, a former student. And what it is, it's about a little girl who uh, wakes up in the morning and she's kind of tired and she walks around her bedroom and she's so tired she trips over something that falls on her face. Then she gets up and she runs down the stairs and she goes and she starts playing the piano. And um, I have to explain this to you in advance because otherwise it'll just be really confusing. Um, the, 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 the idea is that this girl's really bad at playing the piano. So when she plays, it's just a cacophony and everybody's like, oh my God, what's that, right? Um, so the scene is split into three different scenes that are all happening at the same time. Uh, one aspect is the girl coming down the stairs getting ready to play the piano. And then it switches over to these three birds that are sitting in this tree. And the birds are having a singing contest. And the first bird's like, okay, we're going to have a singing contest. I'm going to go first. And he sings a beautiful note. And then the second one says, okay, now it's my turn. And he sings a beautiful note, right? Now the third scene that's happening simultaneously is a little cat is outside and it, it's getting ready to jump up into a planter, you know, like a window box that has some flowers in it. It jumps up there and then it's getting ready to settle in and go to sleep. Now, all three things are happening simultaneously, but what happens, the point where all three scenes converge is when she starts, when she puts her hands down on the piano keyboard, right? Just happen to have a piano keyboard here. Um, 
then this horrible sound happens and the cat who's about to you know go to sleep gets freaked out jumps up in the air and falls off the um the the flower bed and then the birds which are having the singing contest two of them have gone and the third one's getting ready to go and he opens his mouth to sing and then this horrible sound comes out which is of course the piano and the other two birds look at him and start cracking up like you know thinking he made that sound so the storyboard is trying to tell, or the animatic is trying to tell a lot of information. We've basically just placed all of the little storyboards right next to each other, one frame after the other, and, and that's what's happening. So let, let's check this out. Okay, here we go. So this is the little girl in her room, and you know she trips over a, something on the floor comes down the staircase and runs over to the piano. Uh, meanwhile, we have these birds and they start the singing contest. Second one goes. And now it's time for the third one. And right when, when she does that, the, the horrible sound comes out and, and the other birds laugh. Now here's the cat jumping up on the flower box. Getting ready to sleep. And then uh, it hears the sound. It jumps up. It holds on to the edge of the flower box, but it falls. And then all of the all the dirt falls on top of it and a little flower uh, plops in at the end, almost like a grape. So, you know, it went by very quickly and, you know, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on, but still it, it helped to like figure out the scene for the animator, right? Okay, so let's, let's do something similar in uh, Adobe After Effects. So what we're gonna do is uh, go into After Effects and we've got a composition here, right? A new comp. Now, um, all we'll need for this is, um, we just need a piece of sample art, right? And so what we can do is we can go out to the internet and uh, we can just find uh, whatever your favorite art website is where you can get free art like unsplash or freeimages.com. Uh, go to whichever one you want, pexels.com. I've got to accept their cookies thing. What? I don't even want this. What? This is scary. Uh, this looks like malware, geez, don't do that, whatever that was. Uh, let me go to freeimages.com. Uh, that was creepy, maybe they, maybe Unsplash has got some malware on their website. Anyway, um, so you can, uh, you can pick any picture you want. We're gonna use um, a picture to tell a story. In fact, let's, let's grab three pictures. It doesn't even matter what they are, right? So, you know, find three pictures here, right click on them and just do save image as, and save them on your desktop. Maybe the easiest way to do it is just save them, just call them one, two, and three. Uh, so I'm gonna grab this pumpkin, I'm gonna save it as number one, I'm gonna hit my back button. I'm just gonna grab whatever's here, this kitty, right click, save image as, I'm just gonna call him two. And then finally, uh, I'll get one more thing. And let's get this little girl with the flowers, right click, save image as, and we'll call this three. Okay, so now we've got a couple of different images we can play with to make our fake animatic, right? So one of the first things you should do is make a folder where you're gonna store all your assets and your Adobe After Effects file. This is how, always how you should proceed. So we're gonna go to our desktop. Um, we're gonna make a new folder. And I'm gonna call this like animatic, my little folder here. And uh, that's gonna shoot it up to the top of the screen here. Let's see, animatic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my one, two, and three images. I'm gonna command click on those. I guess it would be um, Windows click on for the PC uh, to select all three and then uh, drag those into the animatic folder. Now I'm gonna go into uh, Adobe After Effects. I'm gonna double click inside my um, project window here, this one on the left. 
or actually I'm trying to double click and it's just ignoring me. So I'm just gonna go file, uh, import multiple files, uh, go to my desktop, open up animatic, shift click on all three files and hit open. Uh, now I'm not sure what the heck, wow. It's just going nuts on me, my freaking, uh, all right. Wow, I don't know why, but it just, um, it put all kinds of weird stuff in there. So let me, uh, let me delete these extra things that um, I don't want. So I'm gonna click on those and hit trash. Uh, it looks like I've got two versions of uh, two here. So I don't know if you guys are getting the same weirdness I am, but um, it's probably because I didn't, you know, uh, start a brand new file. I just left it open from the last one. But anyway, uh, so you ultimately want to end up with your three pictures in there, right? And then um, click on any picture and drag it over here uh, and, to, and click on new composition from footage. Drag it over here to new composition from footage. Um, and uh, what you'll have is it will go ahead and make a composition for you that is the size of your picture. Now, notice mine is really zoomed in, so I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to click Fit. And now uh, we'll have that, that pumpkin is going to be in there, the full size of my picture, right? Now, I can grab these other two items here, like my, uh, my cat, and um, I can drag that down uh, below the first picture. And then I'll grab my third picture and grab that down below those other two. So in other words, if I click on my eyeballs uh, over here on the left side, I'm going to see each of my image come up. Each of my images come up. Now, notice that this picture of the, of the girl is a slightly different size than the other two. But yet my picture, my composition remains the same size as the initial one, which was this pumpkin. And that's what happens. You know, I told you guys that when you're creating uh, a project in After Effects, it's good to have what I call master footage, right? And a footage item is any item. It doesn't have to be video. It could be a picture, it counts as footage, right? And whatever you drag in first is what sets the tone of the animation or the project. So in this case, it's gonna be this pumpkin is gonna set the tone of everything. Now, if I wanted to, I could leave my third picture here um, of the girl looking just like that, or I could scale it up to get rid of these black edges, right? Now, right now I'm at 111%. If I come to a smaller percentage, like 50% or something, I can see the outside or the workspace, right? I can click on one of these little handles here, hold my shift key down, and drag the handle out at a 45 degree angle to, to uh, scale that up so that it fills up the whole screen so I don't have those nasty little black areas, right? Now you can, you can see that both the pumpkin and the cat are about the same size. There's even extra data that is, you know, above and below. And if I wanted to, I could grab this photo and move it up and down. But really, all you want are the three items to be um, to be there on the screen. Now, what we're going to do is um, it says you messed up the URL. Uh, let's see, I messed up the URL. Oh, that's why. Uh, that's why I got the um, for Unsplash. Oh, I see. I got some. Oh, so what somebody did was. Uh, there was there was um, there was malware at something that was like on Splash. Okay, I probably just uh, like revert inverse inverted a couple of the uh, letters. Okay, thanks for that. Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty uh, common trick. Is people will take a, a, a URL that is very popular and they'll change a couple of the letters and they'll buy that domain because who would want that, right? And then they'll put um, uh, spam there or whatever. Um, okay, thanks for letting me know. Um, okay, now what your task is, is you're going to have to tell a story with these three pictures. And you can tell it in text. Um, it's kind of like the old-fashioned uh, movies where they showed text first, and then they showed a picture, and then they showed more text, and then they showed a picture. So you're going to tell a little story with your, um, with your images here, and it's going to be essentially <clears throat> magnetic. Okay, so the way to do this is um, you can first, uh, we want the first thing to be just a text layer. And, and 
behind that, we don't want anything else to exist, right? So what we can do is we can click on our text tool here, uh, click on our top layer there, so it'll put the text layer above that, and uh, grab uh, the type tool and drag out a box and give your uh, animatic a name. So I'm going to call mine the story of um, uh, the cat who rode a pumpkin to see his little girlfriend. Okay. So, you know, make up a title that kind of has to do with all three of these items. Um, I'm going to make my text uh, like a, a white color here. And then what I'm going to do is, you see that your text layer start up here on top. I'm going to grab my, um, I'm going to grab the layer right underneath that, which is uh, the, the content block. Actually, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to shift click and select all three of these. And then I'm going to grab my mouse and put it over uh, the beginning of this content block. And I'm just going to drag it to the right. Um, now this 1.00 is one second, right? And so that's a good point to drag this to. Uh, what I want is I just want like a black background so that I can get this text, um, you know, where I want it. And so I can see it, right? So here's the story of the cat who wrote a pumpkin to see his little girlfriend. Okay. Now, um, I changed the order around a little bit. I have the cat and then the pumpkin and then the girlfriend. Um, so what I can do now, I can grab my playback head and drag it down to here. I can rename each one of these layers. So if I click on any individual layer over here and hit my enter or my return key, uh, it will let me rename that layer. So I'll rename this layer pumpkin. And of course you can name yours whatever you picked. And this one is cat, I believe. And this one, I'll just name this girlfriend. Okay, now because I named my story the cat who wrote a pumpkin to see his girlfriend, I'm going to grab the cat layer and drag it up above like this. Um, now, I'm going to need a little more time to tell my story. I, I would say to use about one second for each of these things. So um, what that means is I can shift click all three of these and drag them over one more second to about two seconds here. And then uh, let's see. Oh, I'll show you something that happened uh, to me just now, and it'll happen to you guys too. You'll be looking at this, you're like, why can't I see what I'm supposed to see? Like, I'm holding my, um, I'm grabbing my playback head, I'm dragging over here, and I'm not seeing my text. And what happened was, I accidentally double-clicked on one of the layers, and it opened up just that layer in this layer selection mode here, right? And what you have to do is, see, I'm, I'm just in um, the, the pumpkin layer. Click back over here on Composition 1, and now you're in your main composition, which is where you want to be. Okay, so I have one second where I have this text, and I want it to go to here, and then I want it to stop. Okay, so on my first layer, my text layer, I want to grab my um, content block over here on the right-hand side. I want to grab that little edge of the content block when my mouse becomes a double-headed arrow, and I want to drag it over here to one second, and I want it to stop, right? So I've got one second of title, right? Now, um, I can put another uh, click on my text block um, here again, my text tool again, go down to the one second mark, and drag out the first part of my story. So I can say, um, and my text is a little big here, so I have to make it smaller so I can tell my whole story here. Uh, and I can also zoom in. Now at this point, I can go back to fit. I can say uh, there was a cat who missed his human girlfriend um, but did not uh, own a car or a bike um, and did not have a bus pass. Uh, so he could not go see her. Okay, so this is my second um, text field here, right? 
once again, I want to adjust how that plays out. So I'm going to grab my text block. I'm going to start it at one second. I'm going to end it at two seconds. Now, by the way, if you're very exact about this, you can grab your playback head and drag it over to two seconds. And when you're dragging your content block, you can hold your shift key down. And when you get close to the content block, it should snap to uh, the, the um, playback head here. Um, OK, so I got to bring mine back a little bit. OK, so anyway, um, I, I have uh, the text, which is the title. I have the, you know, the little, uh, it's almost like a silent movie. And then we're gonna then we're gonna see the cat, and we want to have the cat on there for one second. So now up until three seconds here, that's gonna be my cat. I'm gonna grab that and drag it back. Uh, okay, so we've got that and the cat. All right, so now we want another second of text. Um, you know, if I want to, I can turn off these eyeballs right here. Uh, to on the bottom two layers so I don't have to deal with them right now. Click on my type tool, uh, drag out uh, another text box. Um, I'll say one day a magic pumpkin uh, said to the cat um, hey I can take you to see your girlfriend, your furrow friend uh, I can't spell it. Okay. <laughs> It'll take me the rest of the period just to get this word. Okay, I'm going to do one or one letter at a time. G. Got it. Girl. Friend. Okay. Hey, I can take you to see your girlfriend. Um, let's see. All you need to do is pay me in flowers. Um. The cat was thrilled and said, okay. Okay, so now we have that. That wants to last for one second. So I can take this down to four seconds, right? And then that's where I know I want my pumpkin to start. So I'm gonna grab this pumpkin and drag him down to start at four seconds. He's going to exist for one second, which would be five seconds, right? Uh, so let's see what we got. So, uh, oh, and then the text, with the brand new text that I just created, that has to start at three seconds and end at four seconds. So you can see that you create kind of a stair-steppy kind of look here at the top where I'm layering the text layers, I have uh, a stair step going up, you know, with one piece of text kind of layering after the others. And then I have stairs kind of going down with the pictures where it shows one and then another and then another. Okay, so we got the title. Uh, we have the first piece of text. We have the cat, second piece of text, and then the pumpkin. Okay, and now we put in the third piece of text. Um, Okay, so, uh, okay, the pumpkin took the cat. To see his girlfriend. Um, but he had no flowers um, uh, to pay him. Uh, Fortunately, uh, his girlfriend had been picking daisies. I know they're probably not daisies, but I don't care. Um, so she paid the pumpkin, and everyone was happy. Okay. All right, so there we go. And then let's see, we got to take that piece of text. It's going to start at five seconds. It's got to end at six. Uh, we got to turn on our girlfriend here, start her at six and end at seven.
Um, yeah, those aren't really daisies. Those are kind of every flower ever, ever imaginable, right? Okay, and so, you know, I know this is a ridiculous little exercise here. Hopefully you guys got some cool pictures and you're having fun with your stories. Um, but let's see how it plays out. I mean, I can hit my play button here and see if everything's in the right place. Wow. So everything's going way too fast, right? So, um, so the rule of thumb when you have text on the screen is you have to have that text be on the screen long enough for people to read you should be able to read through it three times and and that will accommodate even the slowest reader right now my one second is clearly not enough for any of any of this text it's probably like a third of the time that we need maybe even more um, so what I can do is I can increase the length of my composition and then increase each one of these text uh, you know areas uh, accordingly so let's see to see how long my composition is I can go under composition, composition settings, and you can see right down here how long your composition is. Well, mine is seven seconds long. So uh, let's change that number. I'm going to make it 30 seconds long, which is more than three times as long. Now, when you do that, you're going to get a bunch more stuff uh, appearing way down here at the end of your composition. Now, if you want to be able to see all that at once, you can grab this top little bar here and you can grab the right blue thing and you can drag it all the way to the right. And this is going to show you your entire um, timeline all at once, right? And this might be helpful for you if you want to move things around. Now, my top four layers are text and my bottom three are images, right? I'm going to have to adjust everything, basically. So, um, let's see let's say that i want each thing each one of these text things to be on for three seconds instead of one okay so what that means is the first this first item here has to be on screen for three seconds now i can't see my three seconds when i'm zoomed out this far so i gotta i gotta zoom zoom this back in by dragging this over to the right until i can see the three seconds marks right now what I can do, I can grab my playback head and I can drag it over here to three seconds to give me some idea of where everything's going to be. And then I can click and drag out a marquee around all of these little pieces here. Let me see. That didn't quite work. Uh, and I'm not sure why that didn't quite work. It should work. Okay. Well, it didn't. But um, let me shift click on each one of these pieces and see if that works instead. So I'm going to shift click on everything and then I'm going to hold my command key down and unclick the uh, one which is the, um, the title. Now that I have everything else selected, I'm going to click on them and I'm going to drag them all down so that they all start at three seconds. Okay, so I moved all my pieces, right? Now, um, I can grab this text block and I can drag it out so it's three seconds long, right? Now, um, the pictures, I don't really care if the pictures stay on there for one second. Maybe to be consistent, I should make everything three seconds. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll probably need a longer movie. But now I'm going to go down here to six seconds. And I can click on the top layer, hold my shift key down, and click on the bottom layer. And that will select everything. I can hold my command key down, which I guess is your Windows key. And I can click on the, um, the title and the... Uh, the very first frame that has the um, uh, first part of the story in it and deselect those. Now I can click on everything else and drag it all down to the six second mark. Okay, now I can click on the very first uh, piece of text after the title, drag that down to three seconds, and I can keep going in this manner. Um, I'm going to hold down my command key right now and just individually select these things, right? Okay, so now uh, I don't want this picture here. I'm going to go down another three seconds to nine seconds. Uh, I'm going to drag everything else down. Uh, I'll lengthen my picture to three seconds there. Um, okay, now we have another piece of text, which is probably going to go three seconds to 12. So I'll hold down my command key and uh, move all this stuff over. And as you as you go through this, uh, you know you have fewer and few, fewer things you have to move over. So that was 12 seconds. Now I can go to 15. All I have to do is look at what the next thing is that's coming up in the timeline. In this case, it's this. So I can just select these two, move them over here, 
grab this bad boy and make it go for the three seconds, right? And now it's pretty easy. I'm at 15, I can go to 18. I can even just manually do this. Grab this one, drag it to 18, start this one there. And uh, this one's gonna go to 21. Okay, so it looks like I ended up not needing all of uh, the time that I had. Um, although something weird is happening. I don't know why I was seeing that text down there at the end. Oh, I think it was just a little bit of an overlap. Yeah. Okay. So once again, the, the, the uh, timing of this may not be exact, but at least it's better than it was. So let's, let's check this out. So it's a longer amount of time to read that. It's still not enough time really to read it well because there's so much text. If there were half as much text, I might be in business. Okay, and then of course, um, if I wanted my movie to end here, I could grab my playback head and drag it to that spot and notice that I'm at 21 seconds and two frames. So I could go up to composition, I could go to composition settings, and instead of 30, I could put 21 seconds and two frames and hit OK, and it's gonna, it's gonna truncate my movie right there. So I can make my movie the exact length I want. Now, like I said, if you were doing this for real, uh, you would take some time and you would really, you know, augment everything, you would lengthen everything. I think I could easily double or triple the amount of time that each thing is on screen at least the text, and I could also shrink the text down to a more manageable size um, so that it, it, it went by faster and, and was easier to read. Um, okay, but that's the idea. And then, of course, a very important part of this is, you know, file save as, to save this uh, file in the same folder where you put all of your assets, right? So I'm gonna go to my desktop, I'm gonna go to animatic, and uh, I'm gonna give this a name, I'll call this, you know, sample uh, animatic. And I'm gonna save it in the same folder where my three images are. Because remember, um, After Effects doesn't actually place anything into the program. It doesn't put pictures or music or videos or anything in the program. All it records is a reference, a pointer to where the object is. So everything, absolutely everything you use in your After Effects uh, project has to be in that same folder with the saved After Effects project, or it won't be able to find it, right? Um, okay, so uh, this is pretty uh, straightforward, I assume. Do you guys have any questions about doing a little animatic like this? Nah, seems pretty good and easy. Okay, so what I want you guys to work on is I would like you to make an animatic for Project 2. So I'm going to give you time right now in class to work on it. So that means that you can use stock footage or placeholders for the different aspects, right? Like let's say one person decided that their travel agency was gonna do time travel to medieval times, right? So you could have your first frame and then you could just have some text that says the name of the travel agency. And then uh, a new text screen could come up and it'd say, you know, uh, this, this month our special is the Middle Ages or Medieval Times or whatever. And then you just go grab some stock footage or stock uh, image of Medieval Times and you put that up as the next frame. You keep that on the, on the, pic, on the screen for a couple seconds. And then you have another text that comes up and says, we supplied you with full armor, you know, and then you show the armor. So, you know, just kind of look at your idea that you sketched out and start grabbing, you know, pictures and text and placing them in there as little placeholders for your final project. Okay, so go ahead and work on that. And um, I'll be here if you have any questions. I'll just, you know, mute my video and stuff. Um, mute my audio and turn off my video. But I'll be right here. So if you have a question, just ask me. Go ahead and work on that. And then um, we can take a look at those on Wednesday. Okay. Cool. All right, thanks. the video.